Ladies and gentlemen, wiggle your crankshaft, lubricate your lug nuts, and pinch your preferred piston. Because it's time to talk tall to me. That was trying to be, I was trying to be the sound of an engine. Oh, that felt very like 80s, 80s industrial grunge. Yep, yeah, that's yeah. what it turned into. Welcome back to... Imagine if Tull went through that phase in the 80s. Welcome back to <laughs> Talk Tull to Me. I'm Omen Said. And I am Nick McGill. Together, we are Feckless Momes. And also together, along with you, we are here to talk tall to me. What? A, <laughs> this is talk a surprisingly to me. well-oiled engine. Mm, debatable. That... That with tender love and care and a few replaced parts here and there will take you where you need to go. Not elegantly, not efficiently, but practically. But eventually. <laughs> eventually. And so, uh, quite a few replaced parts, I should say. Yeah. At this point. We're, we're basically just a... We're basically just a, a service line from garage to garage. Oh, I was, I was referring to all of the replaced band members. Oh, oh, I see. That yeah, makes sense. Uh, yeah. From the T one hundred and fifty, that is, this was, through the DeLorean. Oh yeah, through the <laughs> when was that? Through the DeLorean of the oh god, I think the we're losing the stream here. Seventies. You're 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 not in my territory at all. So, and I I know we're not in yours either. So <laughs> chose a bad topic. From the T-150 of This Was Through the Classic (laughs) Abandoned Ship, (laughs) Omen. Through the Classic Mustang that was Aqualung through even to the Generation 1 Toyota Corolla. Omen, I've got a horse over here. Do you want me to beat that? Too, or you, you good with this? <laughs> I'd like to ride it out of this town. <laughs> so, Nick, here we are. Omen said, again, we meet over two microphones and hundreds of miles. You and Indeed. I, our heart beats as one for Jethro Tull. Indeed it does, Nick. And, and what shall our hearts beat about today, my friend? Today, we have track... Six for Thick as a Brick. It is side B, track number two, technically. It is the next six and a half minutes. Mm -hmm. And it is Legends and Believe in the Day. Lucky number six. Lucky number six. That's a very common phrase. Lucky number six. (laughs) Do we have any housekeeping to do before we jump in, or can we just uh, take the plunge? I have nothing, unless you do. I recommend we plunge away. Then, off in the deep end we go. Let's have a listen. Hold your breath. Goodness me, Nick. Wow. We wow. have arrived at the at the dark, oblique, peyote trip like <laughs> gooey caramel center. Oh my god, it's so oh, dark. Thick as a brick. Yeah. Yeah, it's very dark. Yeah, it's you have you have you have to get through the dark chocolate only for the caramel inside to be slightly burnt so it's a little bitter. Yeah. But you got through that dark chocolate anyway, so you might as well finish it. You might as well keep going. You might as well swallow that um, that bitter caramel. Yeah, as they as that, they say. Very common phrase. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Omen. Truly, truly, I feel like we are. I feel like Dante. I in my notes, 
I I reference Dante. But but go on. Wait, let me find. Let me let me let me let me quickly look up the the phrase. If you'll cut out this silence, no doubt. Or if you don't, I shall I shall curse. Or I'll put in funny music. Poop buttocks. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, now our our five year old listeners will not stop laughing. <laughs> Doodleberry. No. How dare you? Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Oh, that's a little bit later. Oh. All right. Midway upon the journey of our life, parentheses, through thick as a brick. Parentheses, doodleberry. I found myself within a forest dark, for the straightforward pathway had been lost. Ah, me! How hard a thing it is to say what was this savage forest, rough and stern, in which the very thought renews the fear. So bitter it is, death is little more, but of the good to treat, which there I found, speak will I of other things I saw there. It is, it is the, you said this is early on, right? This is very early in, in the Inferno? No, that's literally the first, uh, first couple of lines. Yeah, so it's, it is the narrator addressing the reader. Mm -hmm. It is oh, it is it is O oh, Muse in the Aeneid. I believe that's how it starts. O oh, Muses, something, something, something. Translated that in Latin. Yeah, it's uh, it's no. I in in Latin class we we translated that. No, I I believe you. <laughs> no, I'm not reading just, it right just, now and translating. No, it. I was just I was <laughs> laughing at your at your ridiculous linguistic flex there. Oh, just a just a little. Let me flex my my lingua. <laughs> Yeah, it's it is it's such an epic sound both musically and yeah, and content is. wise. I have it 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 has this old English feel to it. And it, it should be a, a one of the passus from Piers Plowman or a canto from Dante's Inferno. It really mm. is it it's just it's got such a story behind it. It feels uh What's the word? It it it, it feels purgative. Mm. So purgatorio, not inferno. In a way, but it also it also feels like it also feels like the dark point of a cycle. Like it reminds me of if there were seasons to this album, I feel like this would be the the depths of winter. Yeah, you know, coming up to the winter solstice. Right, the the darkest the darkest night part of the night before dawn. The night is always darkest before the dawn. That yep. Batman begins. That's it. So, <laughs> as is our want before we before we completely derail ourselves, mm -hmm. shall we shall we chat a little bit about the music? Now, Nick, we don't have to follow this format every time. You're right. But I don't but let's but I don't mind it. But let's do it <laughs> <But> anyway. <let's... laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I feel like I f I feel like because it is always inevitably shorter, we should probably just do the music first. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes, do the music first. I this is this is another one of my uh this is like my second favorite sound from this album is this this dark long hymn-like mournful First, it starts out in really nice acoustic, but then it gets kind of bright and flashy with with the really kind of piercing guitar in there. Mm. Yeah. To me, it, it kind of switches back and forth stylistically between a dirge and a march. Yes. I, it's, yeah, it's very trudging. Yes. Yeah. But it's still, e even when it hits... Those kind of brighter sounds in the in the "Do you believe in the day?" chorus, quote unquote yeah. chorus. It's they're still underlying. It's still so heavy, and it it just I I just picture peasants trudging along a muddy road in the 1500s in New Jersey. In oh New yes, Jersey. in the 1500s. Yeah. No, r the regular yeah. Jersey, the original Jersey. Oh oh yes. The thing that I really admire about this part of the album is the the bass line which is being played not by the bass but but actually by Ian's acoustic guitar mm -hmm. 
It's just so cool. Let's listen to it. Mm. Oh my yes, gosh. Yes, indeed. It's it's unique. You know, again, I mean, this is this is why we like Jethro Tull, isn't it, Nick? Because every single every single song, there's something where you're like, wow, I've never heard that before. Yeah. How extraordinary. And the other thing that makes this section stand out for me is a sound which I am not actually certain where it's coming from. I, my two guesses are either it's in, like, really really flutter tonguing using his his lingua franca or Ling, lingua escocia lingua lingua escocia yeah escocia lingua <laughs> it's my favorite soup <laughs> italian tongue wedding soup yep. okay <laughs> or it's or it's uh, john evan on the on the on the hammond hammond organ with with some sort of effect, but you know the song, the sound that I'm talking about. It's this one right here. You gotta actually tell me what it is, though. Because oh. <laughs> if, it's you, like, if you want me to find it, I need to know what it is. It's the one that's like, oh, I'll do my best to replicate it. Oh yeah. And then sometimes it goes. I was going to very confidently say that it's the organ, and then I heard like two more seconds of it, and I was like, maybe that's the flute. <laughs> yeah. It's really hard to tell. And, and you know, it could be that sometimes it's the organ and sometimes it's the flute. I mean, it's possible. I suppose that they, they could very well could alternate. It could be. But isn't it lovely? It's more of that, like, kind of high pitch can't quite put your finger on it so it kind of makes you uncomfortable to hear yes yes yeah. it's a very disquieting especially with the super minor oh my gosh um, bass line that's going on and i realize now that now that we're speaking that that the um the bass line that i was that i was attributing to the acoustic guitar is later picked up by mm -hmm. by Jeffrey yeah. Hammond on the that's not un, that's not unheard of the particularly bass. in this album is is someone introducing oh certainly yeah a theme even even a, on a minor scale and then someone picking it up later on as an echo or just really light in the mm -hmm. background just to just to subconsciously yeah. keep your head going like this is all one piece this is all happening in a vacuum but I totally agree. It really this is this is the most uncomfortable mm -hmm. section so oh, yeah. far that we've listened to for for me, and I do think it it is born of that contrast in sounds, and then, and then so after that first verse, the the kind of tremolo of unknown instruments starts us off on this bizarre inward dirge, yeah, a a dirge to the center of the earth, and then it switches to the march, yep, and then we go back to the contemplative dirge. And then we end with the march yeah, again. Yeah, the last little bit is is just instrumentation. But yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, it swaps back and forth. But it, they're not they're not separate pieces. They are they're they're two two patches of the same quilt for sure, or two sides of the same coin is actually the mm. more common phrase. But <laughs> you know the the quilt thing. You know. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, I that. Regardless of the march or not, or the dirge, like there's still that underlying feeling of both, both epicness, yes, but also, also that unsettling, and the, the lyrics alone don't necessarily make you think this is something negative or dark or wrong, but in this, in this backdrop of this almost wall of noise uh -huh. it is it's very foreboding it feels to me very reminiscent of 
journeys to the underworld. You know, it it this could be the underscoring mm. of Orpheus going down to rescue yeah. Eurydice, or or of Odysseus going down to um, get info after he got the golden branch. Maybe that's in the Indian. even even Lot going down to get his wife. A lot, a lot of wife, and, <laughs> <laughs> and the worth her weight in salt. It's apocalyptic, almost. It's it's very cataclysmic well, now, feeling to me. When 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 I yes. when I put the lyrics into into it as well. Yes, indeed. And and uh, what a what a wonderful transition, Nick, to the lyrics themselves. I I think we can't avoid talking a about convenient them any longer. transition. I <laughs> I think that this is a really quite baffling section it's, for me. It's interesting, um, yeah. But there were a couple of themes that I felt able to pull out of it. Okay. I, so here's a question for you, Nick. Mm. Do you believe in the day? Do I? Do you? <laughs> Do you? Believe in the day! I believe in the day! So this is, I mean, this is the theme. This is like, it's funny, there's not so much repetition in Jethro Tull usually as there is in, in the music of mm-hmm. or in the lyrics of other bands. And this is a lot of repetition of that phrase, do you believe in the day? And so and then there's the reference, there are multiple references mm-hmm. to the sun, you know, the poet the poets and the wise men signaling the, the rise of the sun. And and then a little bit a little mention of Venus, the the planet attributed to the goddess of love. And so there's, there's for me, you know, it's this very dark sort of foreboding kind of dying feeling, but there's also implicit in it that sense of a cyclical mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. rebirth. It reminds me of a lot of those myths of the dying god. There's one from, from Polynesia that I particularly like about a, there's, there's a, an island that has a beautiful woman living on it, and one day a beautiful young man shows up and they fall in love, and then he's like, oh, by the way... You have to cut my head off and bury it in the well, sand. And she's like, but I don't want to do that because I love you. And he's like, no, 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 it's cool. <laughs> you have to. And so, you know, she does. And from the site where she buried his head, the first coconut mm. tree grows. And that's the origin of the coconut tree, which in the the culture where the story originated is, you know, one of the fundamental things yeah. that support life. It's it's corn to us. Sure, exactly, or uh, or wheat. Or wheat, yeah. But but definitely no any any of that any of that stuff and you know there that's a repeated myth throughout all cultures. So Maui was lying is what you're saying. I I still haven't I still haven't what? seen Moana, so I'm not sure. I know. Omen. I'm listen. You're you are affianced to a Disney zealot. You have no <laughs> excuse not to see. The Rock is in it. I know, I know. Listen, His I, I want to watch it. His song is amazing. Jermaine Clement is in it, and he has, he. I mean, he's in just a little bit, but his song is amazing. Listen, stop drilling. You've hit oil. The, I want to watch it. Clearly, I have, Antoman, if, if this well <laughs> is so dry <laughs> that we're having this conversation. But it does feel to me like that. It, it's it, it feels like the moment of the moment of fear and death and destruction, like you were talking about. But but with the implication of hope for the resurgence of life. Do yeah, you believe death in is the day? not death is not the end. Death doesn't have to be the end. Hmm. And mm-hmm. this, I think this harkens back to the Lord of the Hills. Oh. Mm-hmm. That Go we we on. heard in the the last stanza of last episode. Yes, indeed. In the clear white circles of morning wonder, I take my place with the Lord of the Hills. Right, and in this one we have the dawn creation of the kings has begun. Yeah. The dawn creation of the kings has begun. Has begun. Well, 
the leg mm. the legends worded in the ancient tribal hymn this is this is the legend to me this is that ancient tribal hymn right and right and it's and it's so connected with the earth that the very cries of the seagulls tell of it yeah yeah it is it is it is baked into nature and yet all the promises they made are ground beneath the sadist's fall i mean to me again we have this 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 sort of resurgence of the the constant theme which we're going to get into a bunch later with heavy horses of the the war that anderson describes between nature and industry or nature and capitalism yeah yeah and and eventually the 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 overpowering the way that we just we man industry whatever just just steamrolls over nature and yet there is the constant resurgence of nature mm -hmm. i mean it's a, it almost is a it's almost like a um a, a whirly gig of of <laughs> you really really hit that h there it's like a it's like a whirly gig no oh, whirly gig <laughs> yes indeed mm -hmm. yep the poet and the wise man stand behind the gun the poet and the wise man stand behind the gun, behind the gun. Yeah. Is the why I'm I'm seeing the wise man as our narrator, or one the poet is our narrator, and the wise man is the Lord of the Hills. Mm-hmm. And even though it's all nature, they're standing behind the gun, which is a man-made killing machine. Well, and there's, yes, and there's also the reference to the crack of dawn, which is the traditional time at which people are executed. Oh, nice. Okay. So is, is, this, oh. is this the sacrifice of the fading hero who has to return to the night? I like that a lot. Is this the sacrifice, Nick? Is this the... And they're the ones making, like, pulling the trigger, literally pulling the trigger to kill this hero. They are the beautiful island maiden who is cutting off the head of her lover. Yeah. To make a coconut. To make a coconut or for the dawn creations of the kings to begin. Right, exactly. Hoo-wee. Yeah, this is... Yeah. Oh, man, I would love... This is to ask Ian about this. Just sit down and say, this is... tell me. <laughs> tell me, Ian. You know what, though? I suspect that I suspect that his answer might be uh, unsatisfactory. Uh, probably. I, I, I have a feeling that at least 95% of the time we read too much into the lyrics. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure that he would be like, Ian, you know, please tell us about the Lord of the Hills and, and you know, the, 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 the hero who must return to the night, and he's like, well, I was at a hotel in Cleveland, and I saw a dog out the window fighting a <laughs> beggar. And you're like, uh-huh, and? And he's like, well, that's it. And the dog won. And then my shower stopped working. I, I mean, what it, what it ultimately boils down to is this album in its entirety was created yeah. to to quote be the the mother of all concept albums yeah well and because yeah. of be, be, because we have to keep that in mind anything that seems really highbrow and and up there and oh my man we have to decipher it maybe there's not going to be much beyond that as 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 deep and multi-layered as this stuff seems Maybe yes. it's all just surface. Right. I mean, maybe it was even an attempt to to slag off and imitate other kind of pseudo-spiritual mm. songwriting that mm -hmm. was at the time. Sure. Um, stand, hold on one second. Butt knuckles. <laughs> Donkey wang. Are you getting, Wait a minute. What's, um, getting dangerously close? What's... um. What am I thinking of, Nick? Led Zeppelin. What's the song that you're forbidden to play in guitar shops? Oh, Stairway to Heaven. Yes. Thank you, Wayne's World 1. 
No stairway denied. Fun fact about about Stairway to Heaven and Wayne uh-huh. in Wayne's World. In the in you, are you familiar with Wayne's World? Only in so much as I was born in the eighties. Oh, it's so good. I th- th- those movies stand up for me. For I know they're not they're not great, but I love them so much. But in in the theatrical cut. When Wayne comes into a, a bunch of money, he goes to a guitar store and and picks up the guitar that he's been wanting to buy for a long time. And he plays the first, like, three notes of Stairway. And, dee, 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 and the, dee, dee, dee. The, the clerk stops him and points to a sign that says, No Stairway. And, yeah, and Wayne I've says, No Stairway, denied. But in the video release cut, mm-hmm. they couldn't get the rights to stairway so uh-huh. so the 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 three or four notes that are played in that scene are just completely have nothing to do with stairway they're like oh, bang 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 yeah it's bizarre right no stairway deny no stairway denied so, fun, another fun fact, Nick. Yes. Stairway to Heaven was recorded in 1971. And for me, like, Perfect. that album is really the ultimate, like, I'm going to sit in my dark room in college and get stoned and, like, think about, you know, deep stuff, man. And, and read Tolkien, yeah. Yeah, basically. Or, you know, pick up Tolkien with the intention of reading it and then realize you're too stoned. But <laughs> I feel I feel like this this could this whole section of Thick as a Brick could be slagging off that kind of thing. Sure. Or just slagging off seems really malicious to me. I think it's just taking the piss. I will take one piss, please. I'll I'll have one piss and do you have a to go cup for for one for later? That's how you order a Bud Light in New Orleans. <laughs> oh god. I, I've never drank Bud Light, and I'm I'm proud to say that. So this really could be... <laughs> oh, Omen, you did not say that you have never drunk. I have drunk <laughs> gallons of Bud Light. Oh, Nick. my gallons, gosh, Omen. Gallons and gallons, yeah. I... And you know what? And you know what? I don't hate it. Oh. I I know that hurts you, but it's the it's the truth. I'm coming out today, Nick, as someone who doesn't... <laughs> Not enjoy Bud Light sometimes. It's not my preference. But if you want basically a glass of water that is also beer, it's not a bad way to go. Join us next week on Bitch Beer to Me. And <laughs> where? So Stairway. Where were we, Nate? Stairway. Ah, yes. Right. So it does seem like this section and this whole album really, I mean, this is the sort of beautiful conundrum of it. Is it... Is it just a delightful romp of poking fun at everything in the yeah. world around? Or is it deadly serious? Or is it both? Can it can it can it hold like Walt Whitman to contradictions? Yeah, I mean ultimately does it matter? I think we 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 addressed this probably in the first episode is is they claimed they they claimed it was all just a big kind of ruse and everybody else critics and and fans alike said this is one of the best concept albums of all time so then then the rock reporters would be like well you you ultimately failed because you did it so well and you you didn't actually you didn't actually spoof it you just created something right and and, but, i mean and ian's response is so what people like not it. to get not to get conspiracy on you, but like, oh, please. what if that was the goal all along? What if they I, were like, wow, we want to record this cool thing. No one will take it seriously if we tell them that it's super serious. So yeah. we'll tell them it's a big joke. Oh, sure. Because if they had come out with this album and been like, this is the key to the mythic proportions of modern life. People would be like, yeah, no, it's not. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. What, are you playing a flute? <laughs> yeah. Take I, your cod piece and be gone. I think... I think it's certainly possible, and the thought did cross my head. They were just hedging their bets. They were playing it safe. They were hedgehogging their bets. Hedgehogging their bets. Omen. Yes. Do you have any facts about hedgehogs? Well, it's funny you should ask. I was doing some research recently, and, you know, I was not aware that hedgehogs are to be found in Europe, Asia, and Africa. Yeah, not, not in the States. They are not native to the no, States. No, only as, only as pets. Yeah. Well, we have porcupines here, so, you know, it's sort of like 
Sorry, job's already been taken. <laughs> rodent, rodent with spikes. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah, yeah. Just, just you know, he just came in here. They, they, they roam in people's gardens in the UK. Like they're just, they're like bunnies here. Spiky bunnies. Spiky bunnies. I would, I would love yeah. hedgehogs just floating around out there. That, that'd they be don't, great. They don't float, Nick. They are, they, are, they are not lighter than air. I thought they were filled. Only when they're babies. That's when, you know, the way that they reproduce is they, the reason they have spikes, actually, is that when they're, when the mother becomes ready to give birth, she just shoots out all the spikes in every direction. And that's how she fertilizes the countryside around with, with baby hedgehogs. The spikes hit the ground and they, they germinate. Oh. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Didn't, I, yeah. I thought I thought you were going to say the babies are lighter than air, so when they're born, she pokes them into the ground so they don't float away. Tune in next week for our other podcast, Harangue Hedgehogs to Me, <laughs> where we discuss more nonsense. <laughs> Nick, anything else to say about this section of Thick as a Brick? I, I don't think so, because it's all so... I don't want to say nonsensical, but it's also unclear. This this passage is yes. is so unclear. It's really hard to to really substantially speculate on what's being said. Yeah. Well, then, what do we have to look forward to next week, Nick? Next week is we are now officially halfway through side B. Okay. So this is going to be side B, track three, the next five and a half minutes, Tales of Your Life. The Ooh. second to last track in Thick as a Brick. Until then, you don't have to wonder whether or not the day exists because you can believe your way to giving us a five-star review. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether I believe in the day or not. I believe in you. I believe that you will give us a five-star rating and a wonderful review on iTunes. The legends worded in the ancient <laughs> five-star rating <laughs> Lie cradled in the seagull's lovely review on iTunes. Ooh. I hope someone creates an iTunes profile named the seagull just to give us a review. I think that they will, Nick. I think that they will. I, I, I have faith in humanity. I believe in the day. <laughs> and until that new day dawns, Nick, here on the... Talk Tell to Me podcast. I am Omen Sade. And I am Nick McGill. We are Feckless Moms. And this is Talk Tell to Me. Boy, boy, come, come to the top of this hill. Ooh. Join me. Oh, yes. Huh. Look out. Oh, I can see forever out here. Over these verdant hills. Oh, the sun setting on the distant pines makes me feel the ever-present crush of mortality. Boy. Yes? Do you believe in the day? I do. I do believe in the day. I do. Boy. Yes? Do you believe in the day? I do believe in the day. I, and to prove it, I'll drink this draught which you do hand me with your druid's hands. Boy. Yes? Do you believe in talk tell to me? I do believe in talk tell to me. <laughs> do you and be I believe. 
Speak, wise one. <laughs> Do you believe that Talk Told to Me is a part of the Feckless Momes audio network? I believe. Oh. <laughs> Margaret, Margaret, get the mop.